what's your name? Step into the ring of fame. Gene Genie calling your game. Kyle Halbert in the Hall of Flames. Last and capes are all the same. Heels and faces play the game. Pile driver heartbeats claim. Kyle will put you in the frame. What's your gimmick? Let it show. Gigi wants to know. In the spotlight, let it flow. Cal Howard, steal the show. Hello and welcome to What's Your Gimmick, the podcast where I, Cal Halbert, a.k.a. the great Gene Genie, ask my friends the ultimate questions on their rise through their potential wrestling career. On the show today, I have stand-up comedian, podcaster, radio presenter and Adidas model, the one, <laughs> the only, Mr. Raul Coley. Hi, Raul. Hello, mate. I will take that introduction. I hope everybody introduces me as an Adidas model from now yeah. on. Well, you are. I mean, yes, I am. It's not actually a lie, as crazy as it sounds. It sounds like a lie, given that I am five foot eight. Uh, but both those things, my height and uh, Adidas model, are on my Tinder. So... <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually wearing three because I'm off the match after I'm off the women's I'm wearing three layers of Adidas and UFC clothing I mean I'll tell you one thing Represent. if other people haven't bought the gear I have just because they had me as a model they've definitely got their money back on that fee let me tell you <laughs> well first and foremost the first question I need to ask you Raul is are you a wrestling fan? yes obviously huge wrestling this would be a weird podcast if I wasn't uh, a wrestling fan yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. But it would make no sense for me to have you on. If, if it you could weren't... be good though. Like, uh, was it you who watched it with George Zach? Oh, sensational! And he just like broke down all of the weird things about wrestling that when you're too into it, you don't really see. Yeah, he, his, his... he couldn't understand why JBL wasn't wrestling wearing his hat. He couldn't. <laughs> he couldn't. Like, I was watching the Royal Rumble. He was like, J "Oh, here we go, JBL. Here we go." It's like you know when one of those weird re like to me, JBL was never one of the huge exports of WWE. Like, okay, he was champion for a long time, but it was at a time where WWE wasn't cool, wrestling wasn't cool, it wasn't popular. So how George knew who JBL was baffled me. But I he mean, was it like, was. Because I think even if you because if you watch wrestling during the Attitude Era, like I remember, I wasn't watching the Ruthless Aggression Era. It was TNA that took me back in. Right. So when you're okay. watching like the Attitude Era and then you grow out of it or whatever, like I did, and then somebody's oh, do you know Jay like Bradshaw's a billionaire and he goes by Jay. That's what my <laughs> mate is. Like, he's a billionaire. He wears a hat and he's on like what's that show in the morning where they like chase the shares? Do you know, like NBC's yeah. whatever. Like he's on there and he like tells people what shares. To, and I'm like Bradshaw. As in the acolyte Bradshaw, <laughs> the guy who used to do the Undertaker's day work, hung the big boss man. That yeah. man is a millionaire and invests in shares now. It was such a different... So you'd know who Bradshaw was from then, I suppose. Yeah, but you knew Bradshaw, not JBL. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like You knew Bradshaw. It, it's like... Like, although Hulk Hogan went through loads of different gimmicks, he's always just Hulk Hogan, isn't he? Even if he's Hollywood Hogan. But you would see Hollywood like, and you'd know it's... You know what I mean? You'd yeah, know James. But, Actually, to be fair, if I'd seen him without my mate telling me, I would have been like... Who the Who's hell is that? this guy? Well, he looks completely different. Well, he's a wrestling god, JBL. That's who he is. <laughs> I am a wrestling god, JBL. So good. You are a wrestling fan. That's good news. Uh, how long have you been a wrestling fan? Uh, since I was about six years old. Um, and I Hardcore. Had, yeah, I had probably, I think, the best introduction to wrestling anyone could ask for because I was very fortunate. Uh, I had an older brother who was into wrestling, but he'd yeah. been in it since before. He had little figures from when it was WWF with the um, with the like the, the old school logo, the, the silver logo, do you yeah. know what I mean? And, and I kind of remember looking at some of them like stuff like, what, what is this, this WWF? Yeah. But when he put it on, it wasn't WWF we started watching, it was WCW. Wow, and we okay. got in right as the NWO were expanding, and I, like the first time I saw Sting come down from the rafters, I was, was like, cool. "I have what is this? This is phenomenal." And one day, like if you remember, we didn't have the Monday; we had the Friday Night Wars in the UK. Yeah. So what would happen was, was after it finished, Sky Sports Three would usually become porn, uh, <laughs> but my brother was skipping through the channels. And no, so we were on TNT. It was WCW on TNT, yeah, obviously yeah. through the Turner Broadcast Network. When he skipped through the channels, we end up on Sky Sports Three. And my brother's like, oh, my God, The Undertaker's here. Kane's here. And I did not know who any of these people were. He's like, oh, this wrestler's here. And he liked all these wrestlers from way back in the day. And then glass shattered. 
some guy, bald guy, I didn't like, came out on a quad bike, beat this shit out. Everyone. <laughs> and my brother was like, we're watching this now. So next yeah. Friday, I was gutted. And I didn't realise that I was going from WC, what was about to be WCW's worst period yeah. into the WWF just as it was getting shit hot. I was just gutted because I'd fallen in love with Sting and, and Hulk Hogan yeah. and Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. But, I, you know, the WWE wrestlers obviously grew on me. And then I remember one time we're flicking through and we ended up on Bravo and my dad was there <laughs> and, like, the Dudley boys set a table on fire and put something like Stacey Keebler through it. My dad yeah. was like, you can't watch this. Whatever yeah, this yeah. is, you cannot watch this. My dad was the same. He was like, <laughs> well, I th- my, my dad did see some of the divas and he went, he was, very, he was very much against us watching wrestling because me and my brother used to wrestle each other all the time on the trampoline. That, that's what we used to do. Choke slams, but side suplexes, everything you can possibly think of, me and my brother would do. And my dad was like, you're not watching this anymore. And he caught us the one time and it was like Jerry the King Lawler hosting a bra and panties match. And my dad was like, I, keep it on just a minute. I want to just double check that this isn't okay. <laughs> Didn't realise he was barking up the wrong tree with his yeah, son there. Right? Exactly. That, that was my ultimate beard the wwf <laughs> that's how I, my first pay-per-view was uh, SummerSlam 1990 three years before i was born what because we had my cousins were wrestling fans and we were given a vhs of oh of summer 1990 it was the double main event hulk hogan uh, uh and the big boss man versus earthquake and dino bravo uh, and then the other main event was the ultimate warrior uh, against ravishing rick rude in a steel cage. Oh, that was my wow. first, uh, first pay-per-view. Three years before I was born was the first pay-per-view I ever watched. I, I remember, like, we went to get the Rock's autobiography um, and, like, the lady behind the counter at WH Smith, just, she was like, is that for him? And I was, like, sitting my mum was like, yeah, and she's like, I will not tell you this. It's absolutely not for kids. What? And my mum, like, took offence and she was like, you tell me how to parent my yeah. kids. Went to Waterstone she's like, wait outside, I'm going to go get you the book. And she told me, like, she's going to buy you some fags or something. <laughs> 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 but check this, right? She told my dad what happened. Now, I, I annoyed she was about the whole thing, thinking, oh, who's this woman thinking, you know, I'm brown, I can't parent my kids. Anyway, one day we were driving through, and I'm reading through, but there were a lot of things I didn't understand. One I only understood recently, he ended a chapter with some girls coming around. He's like, where's the condom? She pulled out a, like, a pack full of Trojans, and I didn't know it was the American brand. Yeah, yeah. But I remember one time, he was like, I did a line of cocaine. She just looked up, I was like, Dad, what's cocaine? And my dad, I'm six years old, my dad just looks up, my mum and goes, yeah, I think he is a bit too young for this <laughs> Sensational, sensational. So who is your favourite wrestler of all time? Oh, I'm not sure I could pick one. Okay. I've got like a list of, of wrestlers that I think for me, like connected with me. The Rock and Stone Cold are up there, but I'm not even nice. sure they'd be in the top five. Um, Sting, actually. Sting is hands down my favourite wrestler of all time. Sting. The Stinger, yeah. Nice. It's Sting! Just that first yeah. time coming down. To- I loved hard men who could clear the ring. Yeah. You know what I mean? A sting, a Don't game. we all? <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all, Ralph? <laughs> okay, now I am barking up the right tree with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, he, he was just, when he came down on the rafters, cleared out. Like, yeah. no, it just didn't seem like anyone could stop the NWO. I think since then, he's just one of them that like, converted Christianity and turned his life around, didn't he? Because yeah. he was on the pain pills. Um, yeah, yeah. His, his, his tag partner, Lex Luger, unfortunately, life didn't quite work out for him. He's doing his best. Shawn Michaels was. But even when he was properly on it, when he loved the sesh, Seems he was still a nice guy, whereas mm. everyone thought Shawn Michaels was awful as a human yeah, being. Yeah. Everyone's got nothing but nice words to say about Sting. He's even held his hands up, Shawn Michaels, and said, "Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, a yeah, dick. yeah, absolutely, yeah." He's he's been like, "Yeah, yeah, he, people were right not to like me." But, but Sting... in some ways, I respect that more because I've never liked Shawn Michaels personally. I, I, I don't get me wrong; I think he's a good what, as a wrestler. Yeah, hated him. What? Always hated him. You don't think he's cute? Think he's sexy? No, nope. I thought he looks. was. I thought he was second best in the Rockers personally. What? <laughs> You thought Marty Jannetty should have been the one to screw over Bret Hart, do you? Yeah. You think he should have led DX with Triple H? You think he should be owning NXT right now? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, Obviously not now, not after everything's come out, but let's not go into the details of Marty Jannetty. Oh, I don't know what's come out about. Has he been, has he had a bit of a Mr. McMahon documentary? Not the time, he? Not the time. Just a quick one. Has he had a Mr. McMahon style thing, has he? Or he's a bit of a PGD? Yeah, 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 okay. Uh, So, but but yeah, so I mean, Shawn Michaels is great. I just always, he always annoyed me how unprofessional he was. And then I look back and then you realise this, like when you realise about Shawn Michaels, you go, oh, that's why he was yeah, just a knob. Yeah, yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. So actually, in more recent years, I go, no, Shawn Michaels is great. But all the way through being a wrestling fan, I was like, I hate him. He's rubbish. Yeah, that makes Not sense. Not rubbish, but you know what I mean. Like, I think I just like, I like wrestlers. Weirdly, I like hard men who could clear the rings. So that's why Sting and Kane are up there. Yeah. But I also like wrestlers who weren't afraid to 
uh, I'm coming across really gay here, but I, like, wrestlers who weren't afraid to like sort of get in touch with their flamboyant sides yeah. always had a soft spot for like Billy Gunn, the bright pink trunks, the bright yeah. green trunks. Mr. Ass. Mr. Ass. Yeah, Shawn Michaels was one of them. Yeah, and yeah. He was one of the earlier high flies. I never really seen him. He came back as like the commissioner. Yeah, he was yeah. like in the corporation. That was kind of my first introduction. I didn't really like him. But what I sort of, I sort of saw old clips, do you know what I mean? I liked the way he handled himself. I liked the fact that he was an early high flyer, like him and yeah. Owen Hart really before high flying was a thing or was really cool in the WWF. Yeah, yeah. I liked that about him. He's probably up there. Um, I'm waiting for Rico. If you like the flamboyance, I'm surprised you didn't like Rico. Who the hell is Rico? Rico. <laughs> Rico was... Uh, he was a very flamboyant manager of Billy and Chuck when they were a tag team together. Oh, really? Again, Ruthless Aggression era, so I'm just yeah. out. I dipped out just after the invasion. I loved Rico. It was great. <laughs> so, like, there was I a storyline. I did like Chuck Palumbo, though. I just thought he was jacked. Well, there was a storyline where Billy and Chuck were, like, they were tag teams, and they were going to commit to being tag team partners forever, and Rico organised, basically, this gay wedding for Chuck and Billy <laughs> and Chuck. And then they, like, at the altar, they were going, we're not gay, we're not getting married. Like, <laughs> And, uh, and, like, and Rico also had a tag team with Charlie Hoss for a while. Oh, really? And he would refer to him as Charles, which is always... You know I mean, always this like... is like, for me, as a foreign world, when you talk about Charlie Hoss or Snitsky <laughs> or even a Shelton Benjamin, to some degree I've got, you know, I think, was he Orlando Jordan in TNA? Orlando Jordan, yeah. Yeah, I didn't mind him in TNA, but like, the WWE that period was, yeah, not for me. I think I got back in about 2008. Okay, so so Sting's your favourite wrestler of all time. But yeah, this... Kane, X-Pac are in there, Kane, Rock X-Pac. and Stone Cold, MJF. For me, he made wrestling mm. cool. Like, I think he's so, like, if I have a character, it's closer to MJF than it is anyone. Nice. And Jeff Hardy's up there too. Well, this is this is leads in quite well to what is your Mount, Mount Rushmore of wrestling? Is it me personally or is it people that I think have changed the industry It is entirely up to you. It's your interpretation. I've, I've just said it in which case. For, in terms of the industry, what I'd say is probably Rock, Stone Cold, Bruno, Vince McMahon, um, Hogan and Slaughter. Yeah. I think Slaughter actually... Hogan had, but I think Slaughter really rolled over the whole reason. Like, George's takedown of Kofi Kingston and the sort of, like, casual racism behind it is hilarious. Um, Kofi? <laughs> Sorry, this is an impression of uh, George, not me being George racist. George that comedian. Kofi? Yeah. Black like Kofi? That's so racist. And Kingston like Jamaica? And he's not even from Jamaica. He was yeah. Ghanaian and just stopped doing the accent yeah. halfway through. Yeah, yeah. Just did, like, full Caribbean face for a little while. What I really like about professional wrestling is that the vast majority of racism has gone. Right, the vast majority. Right? Yeah, I've seen some However, videos today about black people on the pay per views. <laughs> yeah, well, well, the thing is, like, but every single black wrestler has been a criminal at some point in their persona career. Every single one. Like, you look back; every single one's been a criminal uh, in the Hayes. WWE. That Carmelo Hayes. He's too young. He's too fresh. He's too young and fresh. So I, I'm talking like the New guy, Jack is horrendous. The, but like, I don't mean like real life cr- criminal. Oh. I mean like their personas. Oh. I was I mean, going like, to say, that's, that's a weird stat to I'm not, yeah, I'm, No, 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 yeah, do not quote me on that. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, Farouk, what did he do? No, no, no. <laughs> Rod I, Simmons. No, what I mean is their personas, they've oh, always been a criminal at some point. Yeah. Every Latino uh, wrestler has, has a lad, stolen. A cheat, yeah, a they've steal. all had that gimmick, right? <laughs> that still fit Eddie to perfection. Yeah, but Ray all... Mysterio is always a good guy. He was never a criminal, was he? Yeah, but but he was Lucha. Lucha he was a Lucha. He was like different. the Lucha personified. Yeah, so you that can't do anything other than wear a mask and do flips now. Yeah, That's all you yeah, do. Yeah, do you know? Yeah, yeah. So and you're wholesome and lovable. Yeah, the personas of all these and the certain stereotypes, the vast majority have gone. However, Samoans still have hard heads. That's <laughs> something that like is just taken as red in wrestling. You go, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No one's ever questioned thing. it. Yeah, <laughs> it's madness. You know I mean, if you're coming from the Pacific Islands, they've got to do things. Total with their heads. madness. <laughs> okay, so what is your favourite match of all time? Um, I've got three. I think my favourite of all time. It's probably too easy, and I wish I could. Have... I've got a couple of others that are a bit more, you know. People don't know about them as much, but my yeah. favourite of all time, hands down, without doubt, TLC2. Really? Every spot done to perfection. You'd never seen anything like it before. Edge Spear and Jeff Hardy. The three, the it's th- one of the every iconic single moments. team having a third coming out. Stacey Keebler, Spike Dudley, Lita. I don't think actually it was Stacey Keebler. It was Spike Dudley for the Dudleys. It was Lita for the Hardys. Who did Edge and Christian have? Did they have St- Stacey Keebler? 
They had somebody, Ooh, but every single the... one. Rhino. Rhino. They had Rhino. Every single one had a third. The double table spot with out of those extra threes that are coming out. My money's on Lita. She's the hardest one, isn't she? Now, right, come on, right, because Rhino's up there for me in my personal. Rhino's Russian great, role. but I just liked how he held himself. Not nah. the gore, the gore, <laughs> gore. I like the leotard. I like the fact he looked like the Punisher. Lovely. I like the fact that he had blue eyes. <laughs> Spike Dudley was always massively respected because that man can take a bump. Because Spike Dudley is m- m- our size. Yeah. He should never have been there at the time. Do you know what I mean? Um, so he should be respected. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Spike 100%. Dudley was inspiration. He was never going to win WWE Champion, but he was an inspiration for us all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Follow no, your no, dreams, I... kids. You can too go through three tables. But that's all he could have brought <laughs> to the WWE and literally Wait, be there. In that era, absolutely. It's it's all that would ever get him noticed. Yeah. Is that he could take a bump. Whereas actually, if you watch his... Hardy, that was kind of how he said, like when he came in as a jobber, when they came in as the Hardy Boys. Yeah. He was like, right, I don't have much, so I'm just going to show these people all I can show you is that I can take a bump better than yeah. most. And people like were impressed by the way he's flipping around, getting mm. hit. So that was probably what led him, because he was underage at the time as well, so he's particularly yeah, skinny. Yeah. And that's what probably led him to get into WWE. Without that, you don't have that phase where he becomes WWE champion, wrestles The Undertaker, Completely all sorts. agree. Completely agree. Uh, so what's your favourite belt of all time? It's tough again. Just quickly, just to go back on the matches, if I can. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I also think my, my close second two are Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho the first time in Japan. Great that was match. Like the That's first a time. great match. Yeah, the first time. Because my mate was telling me to watch it. I was like, bro, I don't need to watch no Japanese wrestling. Because I'm not really into wrestling. I mean, yeah. everything around it, the pageantry, yeah. the showmanship, the promos. But that was, I was like, oh, yeah, wrestling's of, like the actual tent. I can watch this without any promos and yeah, still be yeah. entertained. Um, and it's hard to put on a match like that in this day and age where magician's tricks are gone. Do you know what I mean? There's those yeah, cameras yeah. everywhere. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. 2008, maybe 2009, Ric Flair versus Mick Foley. Hardcore match. Yeah. Because Jimmy Carr said happiness as expectations exceeded. Yep. And everyone was looking at that going, that's going to be like what Ric Flair's last retirement match was. Everyone thought it was going to be awful, a waste of time. And those two pulled out all the stops at like 60 plus. Yeah, there yeah. were bumps I was not expecting either of them. But I know Mick Foley can't really walk nowadays. Yeah, it's and crazy. And has got an alcohol problem. And they are just doing some spots that two 60-year-old men should not be doing. That's another reason why I like Sting, because the, the, the longevity of his career, the continuity. Sensational, And the fact it? he's trying to put everybody else over, Darby Allen, the young That last match with the real glass with Darby Allen. Oh, it was just epic. Poetic. I also think, talking about longevity, I, I think this is someone that's only just starting to get the respect that he deserves. Is John Cena is so massively underrated, in my opinion. As a oh, person, he's... His longevity of carrying the business, I, I think yeah, is absolutely sensational. but he started to carry it when it wasn't cool. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. He did what he needed to do, but I think that's why a lot of people hate him, and it's why I didn't like him at first. Now I won't say a bad word against him, because as a human being, he's clearly better than most. Yeah, yeah. And he follows the weirdest people on Twitter. He follows like loads of random NUFC Twitter fan accounts. I don't know if he's... Maybe got a soft spot for the club. But as a as a guy, he's clearly phenomenal. As a rest, he's done a lot. And when he needed to, he stepped up like, against Roman Reigns, against The Rock. Those promos were fire. Yeah. But I think people hate him because he's a personification of WWE getting sort of like whitewashed, like just becoming boring. And the reason it became boring is because Vince only thinks in expansion terms. So yeah. he wasn't thinking about expanding it story-wise. He just thought of expanding it um, geographical wise he went I'm going to build a network I'm going to take it to Saudi Arabia I'm going yeah. to take it to Europe I'm going to take it to all these countries where they don't really have art or culture so we've got to go right back to the basics because yeah. they're got going to fall go in love with PG, the wrestling again got to get kids in exactly. we need a superhero that's that's what we need can't offend the, 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 the secret police in Iran or Saudi Arabia completely agree completely agree so well Raul welcome you you've walked up to WWE corporate mm-hmm. okay you're knocking on the door Vince says come in one rule in this whole interview that I'm going to give you is no wrestler has died. And no matter what era you choose, any wrestler can return to any era. Okay, so all the way through, you can have anybody you want that will be in, in your corner interfering in matches. Game of Thrones matches. zombie ass. <laughs> Anything at all. Is. This, is, uh, this is my version of the WWE. <laughs> Where no one's dead. Anyone can return at any fantasy moment. Fantasy book in, fantasy book in. Absolutely. So you've walked up to WWE corporate. You've knocked on the door. You've come in. Vince has looked at you and he wants to know, hey, kid, what's your name? Right. I've got a series of nicknames and none of them are really... Uh, I gave them all myself. Okay. And none of them, I think, would work for wrestling. But let's let's go through them. Okay. And you can tell me if you think. And I, I will them. decide on one. Yeah. So obviously, you've got the Newcastle Brown Mail. The Newcastle. Yeah. The Stoned Cold Stunner. Nice. Because <laughs> of previous interests I have and the fact that I'm stunning. Uh, the Solo <laughs> Disco. 
The Wandering Wizard. What's of the Whitney? solo disco? I'm just a one man party, bro. I turn up. I love I the, the solo party. disco. The solo disco. Love but I it. wouldn't want to be like. I wouldn't want to be like. Who is that guy? Adam or somebody? And he come out with a whole entourage and he just sucked. <laughs> you know, the whole thing sucked. I wouldn't want to be like that. Do you okay. know what I mean? But I think I could actually come out with that energy, like bright pink trunks, the solo disco, and I'm just a party guy. But when nice. we get the promos, oh, I actually can put people in their place. Okay. The Wandering Wizard of Whitley, the Brown Live Wire. The Brown Live Wire is a good one. I do like the Brown That's, Live Wire. Vince would go for that. The brown live wire. Yeah. Uh, the Tyneside Tornado. The Tyneside, Tyneside Tornado is good. good. Isn't it? Oh, Most I like of these it. Are, uh, the, the Caramel Nibble. If it, was a, <laughs> <laughs> if it was a UK promotion, the Bobby Razzler would be great. The Bobby Razzler's but sensational. But I don't think that would carry over in America. Yeah. Don Coleone. Don Coleone. <laughs> <laughs> The old Hetonian, uh, the second most famous Raoul from Tyneside, that wouldn't carry. No, that, that won't carry at <laughs> the all. The master of disaster, the brown clown that loves to break down. Cactus pack, that's <laughs> what I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, there's also champagne packy, sausage Raoul. Can you say you would yeah, bleep that maybe? I might uh, bleep that. We don't know. I might bleep that. <laughs> I'd, I'd bleep it just for the algorithm. Yeah. Saying. The brownie loving brownie. The modern day Maharaji, which I've half stolen from Jinder Mahal. Okay. Um, Pure Rajesh, Pilbo Paggins from Pack End, Mr. Steel Yanan. Uh... <laughs> we, we need to choose one the gimmick rambling here, raver. Raul. The you, you're silly the rambling raver at this point. <laughs> All Vince asked was chaser, your name. <laughs> Jupiter's old ally, but I think the ones we've got written down are probably, okay. probably go for. So it's going to be either the Solo Disco, the Brown Live Wire, or the Tyneside Tornado. I, I think I go over like, you know, The Rock was the Brahma Bull. Yeah. Solo Disco, the Brown Live Wire, the Tyneside Tornado. Do you know what I mean? Like, they solo... could be like second nicknames, the great one, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Do you know what? Let's go. I, lo- I love the Solo Disco gimmick. So we're going to go Solo, the Solo Disco Tyneside Tornado. Yeah. Okay, that's what we're going for. You are the Solo Disco Tyneside Tornado. He loves it. He's great. Where are you billed from? Oh, Newcastle upon Tyne, obviously. You stay in Newcastle. Got to, I'm absolutely not changing. I cried when I saw Pac on WWE. Really? But I seen him in a Newcastle shirt, and it wasn't even like it was like on YouTube. It was like him playing ice hockey in a Newcastle shirt doing a promo. And I cried because I just sort of realised that had I perhaps seen someone with my accent, that's what kind of led me to comedy. Yeah. Like, Tiger Ali Singh was there. People who looked like me could do this. Not the size, but skin-wise, I could do it. But people who sounded like me could do this as well. And yeah. that was such a moment for people of this region, I think, if, if you watch wrestling. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree, I agree. Uh, what's your backstory or your origin? My origin uh, is I'm real. Nice. I'm real, I love to party, but I'm realer than any of these wrestlers. They come out and they tell, I'm going to beat you at the next pay-per-view, and they say nothing of any substance. And it's almost like they're not listening. My whole thing is I'm dancing with the audience because I'm the <laughs> solo disco baby, <laughs> and ain't nobody bringing a synergy like me. I get them popping. <laughs> Pop it. <laughs> I love it. I, I'm in. I'm in. I love it. How do you stand out from other superstars on my roster? When we're talking about bars, listen, Mr. Caster, I don't need no rap beat. I'll tell it to you without, and you'll be screwing up over them beats as well. I hear you, but I don't need a beat to be charismatic. I will call you out for what you are. Mr. I don't have an opinion, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Not done anything successful or relevant since 1999. Black Adam was a flop, baby. We all know. You can lie. Uh, You can open up your kind of whoop-ass, Steve. Just make sure it ain't Deborah this time. Uh, (laughs) I'll go over the jugular. I really like when wrestlers hit that line of kayfabe and, and what's real. Because uh, I think mm. that's why I'm still into wrestling. When they get there and they hit that. When it's gritty. Yeah. Like when it's like I'm watching it and I'm going, I don't know if, if this is scripted or not. I don't know if this is planned. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But that's what made CM Punk's pipe bomb. And in this day and age when wrestling, we're past anyone believing it real. Yeah. Right? Well, there's once upon a time people did believe it was real. And then in the Attitude Era, you kind of have this sort of, well, it's kind of what's going on backstage. Who's signed to who and when do we know and what, what are the fans I print now? Nowadays, you, you live in 2024 where the backstage is the front stage. It's podcasts. It's wrestlers playing video games. We all know. It's, dirt sheets are everywhere now. Yeah, dirt sheets are We all know the thing is kind of not entirely real. So it's scripted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So from there, I'd be going for that angle and milking that for everything. I've always hated the fact that people dismiss professional wrestling because it's scripted. I've Back always hated it. 
Do you know what I mean? I've always hated it. Do you know? And you just, I'm just go, like you don't have an imagination. What? That's what that tells me about you. Yeah, you're even, not willing to open your mind up. And not even the argument of yeah, I, I get it. Professional wrestling's a soap opera. Yeah, yeah. People, millions of people still watch EastEnders and Coronation Street. Exactly. Right? And even not from that point of view, like I, you're going to the match tonight, the Newcastle match, right? I have watched hundreds of football matches that have bored me to tears, and I yeah. love football. Yeah, I love football. Yeah, 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 yeah. Professional wrestling is never intended to be boring. For me... Okay, there have been boring matches, don't get me wrong. Absolutely. It's never the intention. Promos, which is where the solo disco is. But <laughs> <laughs> calling these motherfuckers... Calling these motherfuckers... I'd be influenced heavily by MJF. I just think his bars are unreal. I'm going to finish you... Verbally going to finish you quicker than your UFC career. Like, nice. that's just... Like, I've been waiting for someone to say that since he comes back. And straight away, he's in there. Love it. Love it. What's your look? Your ring gear? What are you wearing? What colours are you going for? Are Bright you sticking with it? trunks. Pink? Bright pink shoes. Like, maybe uh, the pads, if I need them for my joints, I'd rather not have the pads. I'd rather just have the trunks and the boots. Yeah, but yeah. I come in, I throw you off because you'd be like, it's Mr. Friendly, it's Mr. Fungi. What trunks are you going for, though? Are you going for the underpants or are you going for, like, the, the Billy Gunn trunks, the I shorts, want, Joe Hendry sure, trunks? I want to go for them, yeah. The I was shorts. thinking about the underwear, but I think I prefer shorts. I never wear Y fronts. I always wear boxes, so right, okay. from there, it's got to be shorts. Yeah, yeah. But I'd switch things up. You know, I'd love on the video games where you can, like, Oh, you can be server sting. Wow. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like when someone has a gimmick, oh, you can be the fiend. I love me a gimmick change. I've, all, I've got a theory that wrestlers always do their best work in the underpants trunks. Yeah, absolutely. Personally. The pants I still think, like, I might just flip the green pants one day. Do you know there what are, I mean? There are exceptions, don't get me wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, Come out with some face Chris paint. Jericho never looks good in, in white front <laughs> pants. He always looked better in the long tights. You always look better. Always look better. Always look better. Was it the Lion Tamer? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. always look better as the Lion Tamer, for always sure. Always looks better. Far better than the, the... Whereas, can you imagine Ric Flair wearing a singlet? It'd look awful. <laughs> Look, There's awful. not many wrestlers who wear a singlet now. Rob Van Damme sort of made it his own and then Ryback kind of... Ooh, I mean, Kurt really... Angle wore one and Kurt then Angle the Real good. Americans Rhino. are now wearing them. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the Real Americans are just... And I don't think that's good because they're not separating themselves from Kurt. Yeah, they it's look, sort of, but they look too much like, oh, do you remember Kurt? Yeah, yeah but that's... it probably makes a bit more sense if you grow up in a country where amateur wrestling is such a... Uh, a serious sport. We don't yeah. really take that seriously. Yeah, we, we don't have that. So the solo disco, the Tyneside Tornado, is wearing bright pink hot pink I come straight for that bright pink and imagine me and bright pink talking the judgement day do you know what I mean nice island's full of characters Finn the other one exactly my <laughs> point how did they find two of the least charismatic people to come out of Ireland <laughs> they can all wrestle but some of them struggle with the talking aspect yeah. and the reason I'm here is because I'm fine with talking it's what we do for a living I just can't wrestle and I'm tiny <laughs> <laughs> He's all mouth this. He's all mouth the all silent, bark, dis- no silent bite, solo disco. But that doesn't disco. matter in wrestling. If I put in the effort at this point, I can't actually wrestle as we're imagining. Or I'd be, I'd be world champion in a short mat retirement. It's true. It's true. So, do you have a signature catchphrase or promo style? You've said that you're very real. You're, you're going straight to. You're, you're going to blur the lines of kayfabe. You're going to make it gritty. You're going to make it real. But do you have a, 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 a catchphrase or a promo style that you always go to? Bars, like just serious bars, cutting into people. Do you know what I mean? That's the promos and that's what's real. Um, and then I have to say something like, because you might be the man in town, you might be the main man at the party. Yeah. But they always pop for the solo disco. <laughs> It's always popping at the solo disco, baby. You may be the main man at the party. I am the party. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Logan Paul. I am the table. <laughs> and do you have any real but baby? Life? I would say I call the wrestlers baby. Infantilize them as well. Oh, but no, baby. I I am the party. <laughs> oh, it's, you'd be like Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, I, I love. And even America can't help me, stand me from the storm, baby. I, I came back <laughs> on the Dusty Rhodes because he wasn't there when I was a kid. Love him. The way he talks with a lift, the sort of black way he speaks, that Southern American draw. It's just, <laughs> oh, it moves you. I, I wish Cody had a bit of that about him. I love Cody's the amazing, don't get me he wrong. He's great. Let me tell you, a working man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like, I ah! love the stories of him where, where they go, oh, what, what? What are you doing, Dusty? You just sit down and listen to the American Dream, Dr. Rose, baby. <laughs> Love it. It's great. It's it's sensational. Like he's got that. I read about it when I was doing a politics master's. Like, the Southern Baptist drawl yeah. is kind of part of the reason Martin Luther King's speech just travels. I have a dream! And Dusty Rhodes has that same drawl. I would love that. 
I have a dream, baby. <laughs> baby, I have a dream <laughs> that a man will be judged on the content of his character and my character be flamboyant, baby. It's the solo. <laughs> now, leave it, Mean Gene. I need to find Sweet <laughs> Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any real-life inspirations to your superstar, either other wrestlers or not, from the outside world? Uh, the Rock, so larger than life. Just, just so, like... Once you like, it's crazy because in this day and age, I kind of think you see now the, the rock is all style, yeah. maybe a little less substance than yeah. we perhaps realized. But the style is when you're that stylish, who needs substance, right? Yep. Uh, I loved Stone Cold's whoop mass attitude. I'd try to bring that in, but I don't know if it fit the character. I think it could. I think that'd be the surprise to it. Yeah, that'd yeah. be like the beeline that comes out of nowhere. Love it. Uh, MJF, just the bars and CM Punk, just getting on that sort of borderline, that tightrope of real kayfabe. Uh, Jeff Hardy, because I am a high flyer. Like, I learned all the stunts from wrestling. I never learned wrestling, but I could spin a Rooney, people's <laughs> eyebrow, the worm, and I could swan Tom bomb perfectly. Love the worm. Oh, I love Loved the worm. Loved it. I could do it Loved backwards, it. bro. I used to break it out at all the kids' discos. In, uh... <laughs> Do when you know, I was a kid, it's not like I'm just going to children's <laughs> discos now, doing the way of the president. Come with me, children, in the back of the van. I don't think I've ever told you this, but when I was in school, we had a, uh, a, a substitute maths teacher one day called Mr. Painton. And me and my mates were talking about wrestling. And it, was, it wasn't cool to talk about wrestling mm-hmm. at the time. We were chatting away and... Rather than doing the maths work, Mr. Payton came walking around. You know, as teachers do like the zigzag through the classroom as they're going around. We were just chatting about wrestling. And he said at the top of his voice, he went, talking about wrestling, are you boys? And we were like, oh, don't, <laughs> don't out us in front of the whole class. He went, my favourite Scotty to hotty. <laughs> and I went, brilliant, brilliant. He, he must have been like a 60-year-old bloke just doing a bit of like supply teaching. You go... A 60-year-old man from South Wales loves Scotty too hotty. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Brilliant. Outstanding. Well, creative, we're happy with you. Uh, the, the solo disco, Tyneside Tornado, you're hired. You're hired. You're on the roster. Let's get it popping, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm, very, I'm very pleased with you. Let's have a look at your debut, my friend. Okay. So you get to choose, okay? Which show do you debut on? Are you SmackDown? Are you Raw? Are you NXT? Is it something else? Please don't say Velocity. No one ever had a good debut on Velocity. Velocity is. And what era are you um, coming in at? Do you know what, right? <clears throat> in my head, on the way here, I was thinking. And I was thinking, like, what? I'd probably like to... When would I debut? If there's no mm-hmm. time, like, I'd like to debut on... Probably, like, when I watch wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah. 98, like, 98. Sunday Night Heat, never mind Velocity. Sunday Night Heat. Right? But then I also thought, you know what? I would... I would and die in that locker room. Yeah. Like, JBL would be fucking shitting in my bag. You'd be hazing me. I'd probably get raped by Diddy and fucking Vince McMahon. <laughs> like, I probably would, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not tough like that. And they were big, big boys. Yeah. I would not be able to handle myself, I think, in the locker room. So probably, like, AW Dynamite now, try and build my own career like MJF has. Okay. And then switch over when, when I'm the hottest property so I can have, like, a Cody Rhodes-style wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Where everyone's expecting me at some point to make the jump. Are and you going to go through... I've got that name brand. I'm in Happy Gilmore. Everybody knows I've got that personality. And it's just a matter of time. Everyone knows WWE would want me. Yeah. But I've built enough myself. So are you going to <clears throat> SmackDown or Raw? It's got to be Raw for me. As much as I love Raw. SmackDown and the way The Rock sort of uh, put that into common vernacular. Yeah. Um, and the fact that it's actually a word. Like, it's now a word. And yeah. the fist back in the day. Yeah. But for me, Raw is the iconic Raw. old school. See, yeah. when, I, when I was a kid, SmackDown was my show. Loved SmackDown. Now, I can't watch SmackDown very often because it's Friday nights. And I don't like watching like Smackdown and Raw on catch up I have to watch it live oh really so, I like to watch the YouTube highlights nah. because I can't I don't have five hours a week have to watch it live so like last night I was I was sat in this very office till 4am watching Monday Night Raw last <laughs> night I love it did Absolutely. I miss much I've not, I've not actually caught up with it hey I'm not going to spoil it for you what a main event though Ooh. incredible main event Go who's, back it, who's in the main event it what was it uh, the last monster standing match incredible oh was it Braun, it. Bronson Reed and uh, Braun Strowman it was incredible yeah, yeah. yeah, someone returned. I can spoil it for you if you want. This this is going out so people will know. So it doesn't matter. I can spoil a, a return for you. Or do you want to save it? Go on, spoil the return. Seth freaking Rollins returns. Does he? In the Monsters standing match? Yeah. Oh, he's got beef with Brunson Reed, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. Curb stomp on the steel steps. Brilliant. Sensation. The ring collapsed. It, I was like nine years old again. They did the suplex and the ring. Oh, brilliant. Loved Let it. Let me tell you, Seth. You got all the style of the solo disco, but none of the substance. I don't care about your return. What the people want to know. When's your wife returning? 
Oh, wow. baby! Oh, oh, he's set up. Okay, <laughs> this may answer my question for me. Then you've debuted on Raw in '98. Is your standard go-to face or heel? Face. I'm just naturally. I, I dance with the audience, and they like where I lead them. <laughs> this is one hell of a tango, and they can't help but fall in love with the solo disco, baby. Love it. And your, uh, do you have a specific entrance style? Do you use a standard ramp entrance? Are you using... Big pyro. Big pyro. Big pyro. Big pyro. I'd Every... like to come round for the rafters. I don't think that just matches who I am. I'm nah. not gothic. I'm not... Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not horrible. Like, I'm not, like, evil. Like, I've not got that dark brooding. There's nothing to this character that has that as much as Big I like Big pyro. That could come back as, like, maybe, a, you know, sort of the way Finn does the Fiend. Yeah. Something like that, and maybe face paint come from the rafters, be a bit more dark and brooding. What, what like color came back when he went from surfer to, to crow? You're wearing hot pink, so what color pyro are you having? Are you pink. going pink? Are you going yeah, pink? Absolutely. It's going proper pink. Full yeah, of, love it. Absolutely. Absolutely love it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're pleasing creative. I'll be honest with you, you're pleasing us. And let very, me very tell happy. you, because I'd, I'd imply, uh, but I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't say, obviously, for PG and all sorts of reasons, but I'd be like. Because the party's best when it's pink. You know my girl, Molly. She always pink, baby. <laughs> Are you sure you're a face? Let's, uh... <laughs> okay, what type of style do you embody? Are you a high flyer? Are you a brawler? Are you a technician? Are you something else? What's going I'm on? I'm a high flyer, naturally. High flyer. I'd, do a bit of t- I'd be technical because I, I don't know. I think I've got the right sort of agility to do so. Yeah. I used to do gymnastics, used to break dancing, but I'm a high flyer at heart. High flyer. I want to give you moments you've never seen Going before. Going straight for it. Yeah. And do you engage with the audience, with your taunts? Are you an engager or an antagonist? I'm an engager. Engager. I, in comedy, I'm an engager, and in wrestling, I've been an engager too. I hate nothing more than when they pretend you're not there. Yeah. Because without them, this is a fucking waste of time. Yep, I agree. Completely agree. You've got to keep them happy. You've got to keep them happy. You've got to give the people what they want, and you'll always find that at the solo disco <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any signature uh, and finishing moves? If so, what are they called? Um, I say if, you will have one. But a tribute to Jeff, I suppose. It'd tribute be Swanton to Jeff. Bomb, but Swanton I call it a bomb. tribute to Jeff. Not a tribute, a tribute to Jeff. A tribute to Shooting Star Jeff, yeah. Nice. A tribute, okay. a Shooting Star Jeff. Shooting, shooting Star, star Jeff. Press, I, shooting if I could star do a Billy Kidman Shooting Star Press, I'd do it, but I can't, I can't do one. The Shooting Star Jeff. Yeah, I'd probably do like... Um, Puka Forever, which would be the spin rooney but like you just never come up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You do, that's the breakdancing move. It's the windmill, so you just okay. back forth, back forth, back forth. Just kicking people around the ring. Uh, yeah, 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 like yeah, some yeah. Cesaros. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Okay, great. And what are your notable I have, like, weaknesses? A comic, a comic moment where uh, you know I'd, I'd I'd be doing it, and then the, the, like the Undertaker would rise, I'd stop and kick him back down. Like you know, the Rock doesn't the yeah, people yeah. Like, they go back to the spin rooney nice. type thing. <laughs> um, uh, probably too kind, too trusting, uh, and too much chasing a good time. Okay. And that's what gets me in trouble. Ah, okay. I think that's an accurate reflection so of why your, I'm keeping there. That's your weakness and vulnerabilities. Mm-hmm. I see. Okay. Well, you, your debut, you, you, Twitter's gone mad. Twitter's gone mad. We've got a new guy in. Who, who's this tornado man? Who's this? <laughs> why is he wearing pink? What's going on? We're loving it. But you slowly, you, you're building fans across the universe. People are loving it. So let's have a look at your time on the roster and your rise up. What's your ultimate goal? Are you going to be a WrestleMania headliner? Are you going to be a mid-card jobber, a tag specialist, a record setter? What's your ultimate goal? If you ain't in the business to be... I wouldn't have this as my persona, but if you ain't in the business to be the best, then why, why are you in the business? Do you know I what agree. I mean? I'd be a cult hero like Jeff Hardy, but I would, I would definitely get my, my hands on that, that belt at some point. Yeah. Uh, one of my two favourites, either the... the, the I the new world one's okay, but the ninety eight, ninety nine, the blue stone cold, yeah, that for me was that. I'd bring that back. That's the belt That's, you want, yeah. Or that I do like the WCW World Heavyweight one. I never liked it's that. So big. I always I like, like the how big it is. I like how big it is. Yeah, yeah. It, it is just huge. It dominates right? the wrestler almost. Yeah. That's why they could never put it on a small man because it's too big, isn't it? It's like. It's too much of a belt to human <laughs> ratio, isn't it? Spike Dudley was carrying a belt that's half the size of him. <laughs> it would have been cheaper to put Spike Dudley in hand luggage. The thing looked like it weighed the them... same as Hornswoggle, didn't it? <laughs> it, does, it does look massive. <laughs> she would have put Spike Dudley in hand luggage. It would. Put the, <laughs> put the belt in the seat. You'd get, you'd get, a better, get a better ratio of price there. Do you have a match type that you're a specialist in? A match type that I'm a specialist in? TLCs, hardcores, hell in the cells. Okay. Anything where I can jump off of something. Okay. Right, we're very pleased with you. You're doing a great job on the roster. Uh, but you have a chance to win your very first belt. 
Okay, but which pay per view do you have your first title match at, and what's the belt that you're going for? It's got to clearly be WrestleMania, hasn't it? You going WrestleMania? The grandest stage of them for all. your first belt. Well, I mean, I'm starting AW and hoping to switch. Okay, so if I start in AW, it'd probably Wrestle Dream or All In, hometown crowd. Well, home country crowd, yeah. London, Wembley. Yeah, that'll be a pop. That'd be huge. Okay. Um, but if it was WWE, it'd be WrestleMania. WrestleMania. You, you want to have your WrestleMania moment. WrestleMania. 40-foot ladder match. 40-foot ladder. Well, it's got to be 40-foot. got to be one of okay. the giant ones. Yeah. And what belt are you going for? For your first... very first title. If I'm in AEW, you don't want to rush things, do you? No, no. TNT. TNT. If it's the TNT Championship, because I think that's their Intercontinental. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so Intercontinental, okay. And then I think by the time I get to WWE, I'm Cody level. I'm Whoa. already... I'd love that. If your first title's the Inter... Like, if you're in WWE, your Intercontinental belt's the first one, you change the white strap to a hot pink strap. I'm in. Oh! Love it. Love it. I would do that, absolutely. But cool. I think by the time I got to WWE, I'd be chasing the heavyweight. Okay, yeah, and, and who do you... So you hold on to that title, until at least until the next pay-per-view. Who do you drop it to? Any wrestler. Anybody, you don't care. You're looking at the next step. You don't care who you drop the belt to. I don't know. If I'm thinking about like me, I'd want to put over somebody younger, somebody yeah. like, you know, modern, help take the industry forward. Uh, for me, it's got to be one of the talk. It's got to be punk. Punk. It's got to okay. be punk or Cody or MJF. Okay. MJF on his debut. That's what I'd say. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I Not like on his it. debut, but in like six months of his debut or whatever. Okay. Which. Current or previous storyline would the solo disco Tyneside Tornado have improved? Try answer ask that again. Which current or previous storyline would you have improved by being a part of? I genuinely think I could improve most storylines. <laughs> Not my as a wrestler, but I've always kind of wanted <laughs> <laughs> the arrogance of this man. <laughs> it's no, but I think if you had me at the back, right? And I've, 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 I've told like Billy, I've told Wee Man, if there are no any wrestlers who need any like, like a comedian will write bars for you for free, yeah, and give them to you. And if you don't want to use a single one, bin them all. Totally fine. If you think that's a great bar, use it free of charge. I will help you do your promos. Yeah. Right? Um, and once I find that wrestler who's willing to. That pro, those promos are just gonna fly. You're just suddenly gonna see this guy is relevant on Twitter, and you're not gonna really. Is he know gonna? Why. Is this whoever decides to start using it? Are they gonna start referring to themselves as the solo disco? Is that what's <laughs> gonna happen? Is that what you're saying? Not quite, not quite. But I'll be writing these bars and writing these facets of these personalities. I've like one sort of you know these outside dreams you get. Yeah, and you're like it could happen. So it's not any, gonna happen tomorrow. It might not even happen to you, but it could happen. Any it's story to be like right. a wrestling promo guy and um, boost up the sort of. The background writing. Okay. Ascension, the bars. Okay. Um, so I think what was the most boring storyline of the year? That and you needed just a solo disco. It. You needed you yeah. improve it. But okay. I can't remember. All the ones I remember, I don't think Cody and the Bloodline would have been improved by me. Mm -hmm. I think the current iteration would be improved because I'd, I'd just play it slow. Nice. I'd keep Roman out and then I wouldn't put him with Cody and Randy and Kevin. I would wait and then... I'd bring back the old bloodline, the Usos, Sammy, Bloodline Infinity War, Solo Disco, special guest referee. I don't know how I fit into this. Uh, I think Bronson and, and Braun Strowman, I would, I, and Seth, I don't, I, it sounds ridiculous. I don't think his, pers he's, his, his flamboyancy is over. Yep. He, the way he delivers lines is over. His music is over. His clothes are over. I don't think he's ever really had a promo that's made the audience lose their mind. Step aside. I think Braun Strowman uh, is a big guy. Yep. The big SOB, the big sob, because all he ever does is cry on his Instagram about how he used to yeah, get bullied. Yeah. I would get him to lean more into that, into who he actually is. Not the monster among men, but Braun Strowman, the human being. Because there's an interesting story there, but there's kind of a separation between the monster among men and the human being. Bronson Reed, I've not seen, maybe he's really good at promos, but I think I would make my opponent better by putting him under pressure, regardless of who I'm against. Do you nice. know, like when, the, when John Cena stood up The Rock, he was with the best in the game, so he became the best in the game. Brilliant. But before that, he could, was fine being just run of the mill. Love it. You win the King of the Ring in your fifth year with the company. It's your most notable achievement since your Intercontinental title win. How do you deal with it? Do you embrace the King gimmick? And or do you want to see do you want, do you want people to see you as a serious contender for the title? 
obviously I want people to see me as a serious contender for the title. But I think uh, I would embrace the the king gimmick. I'm the king of the party. I've been saying it, maybe not in those exact words, but you've all <laughs> known it. And I've always identified <laughs> as a fool. But kingship is earned, and tell me, this ain't the hardest work in disco you ever seen in your life, <laughs> baby. So it, the the king of the party is here. We're loving it. We're we're very pleased with you at Creative. We know that you've been working harder on the roster, but we've decided that it's time for you to have a chance to headline WrestleMania. And you t- you can contend for any belts you wish for by winning the Royal Rumble. And you do win the Royal Rumble. However, what number do you enter at? I'd love to enter at, like, number one, number two. Do you know, be one of the people that survives the whole thing. And, and hopefully that's when you... Because if you're in the whole Royal Rumble like that, you've really made it. Yeah, yeah. Like, the audience... We think the audience want two hours of this guy. Like... So I'd probably like to come in at number one, number two, but also a debut is like a, a debut in the Royal Rumble. If I couldn't get WrestleMania, a debut. Do you know what I mean? No one's expecting you. And then at 28, the roof goes off. Nice. Or even number 30. Number 30. The solo disco is here. Oh my God, King, the solo <laughs> disco is here. Like the John it's Cena return. It's free engine in the business, JR. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay, right. We're going to say you come in at number 30. You come in and you win this match. For your chance, but who were the final three men stood in the ring with you at the end? From all time, Kane. Kane's in there with you. CM Punk. CM Punk. MJF. And MJF. Off the top of my head, like Sting could be in there, The Rock could be in there, but I think me, CM Punk, and MJF talking. That's the top four. That's really what you're going for. And I just think Kane. Being who he is, like a fire-breathing demon, <laughs> just like kind of brings an outside edge that shouldn't be there, but we'd make it work. Who's out kind first? Of... Got to be Kane. We all team up on Kane. Kane's out first. Yeah. Then the three of you are stood there. Then CM Punk, Punk, MJF, Punk's and all there. You know, he's he's, he's part, he, like, part of him should be now is to, he's to build up the younger boys. So and that's me and MJF. You and MJF a, forge our own destiny. Forge a brilliant feud in WWE for the first time and, and Punk's going to be the special guest referee. Nice. And you throw MJF out. Kane just out. comes out in the middle of the ring and chokes <laughs> up both of us because he's pissed off about the Rumble. You win the Rumble. Do you point at the Mania sign? Oh, you got a point. <laughs> <laughs> not everyone does. What is not the point does. of the disco if, if not to have fun? What is the point of the point? You've won the Rumble. Monday Night Raw. You come out. And you're telling us I, I, which I, I, belt I, I, you're going I, I, for. I had a little jig actually at the end. I know, You'd had uh, a jig, a dance. Yeah, like because nobody does that, do that. I'd make the point no. my own. I'd point. And Rikishi this is an audio too cool. Podcast, but I'd be like <laughs> dancing <laughs> while pointing at the side, just so they know it's my point. It's you, the point of the solo disco. So you've won. The solo disco is the winner and number one contender. It's Monday Night Raw. You get to choose which title you're going for. What are you going for? Whoever's got the most important one. If Roman Reigns is holding SmackDown's title, I'm going for that. If he's holding Re- Raw's title, I'm going for that. Um, between Roman, it depends. Do you know what I mean? But if Punk and Roman, oof, then I'm going for Monday night. Whoever's yeah. got the Monday night title. Whoever's got Monday the Monday night title. what I grew up watching. And who are you facing for that championship? Who's got the title? MJ. Oh, Christ, it would be Punk or MJF. That's how I would lead into it. Okay. Um... I tell you what, then let's, let's take say Punk. It's yeah. Let's yeah, take let's Punk, take out, the punk out the Rumble. It was Sting. Let's put Cody in. Oh, Sting. Sting yeah. was in there. And Actually, no. For me personally, Sting's who I want to take it from. Okay. But in terms of the story, I think me and Punk, the passing of the passing of the pipe bomb. That's okay. essentially what you'd be sort of getting at with this particular narrative. Okay. So who who are you facing, Sting or CM Punk? Uh, Sting was in the Rumble. I'm facing Punk. Okay, you're taking Punk on. Punk sees or if I'm you. I'm facing Sting. That's when I get Gothic, and that's when I bring out the alter ego. It's up to you. You get to choose. Who are you facing for the title? Punk. Punk. Punk sees you as a bit of a joke. He thinks you're a waste of time. He just sees you dance around in hot pink and, and doing dances. He's that confident that he's going to beat you. He lets you choose the stipulation of the match. What are you going for? No holds barred. No holds barred. We got everything at this disco, baby. You're going in hard. Hell it's yeah. no holds barred. Who wins? Me after <laughs> smashing alcoholic bottles over punk head repeatedly. <laughs> just smashing a bottle of gin. Not real glass. Nobody needs to cry me a river. 
Not real alcohol, obviously, because that's not nice. But it's just me, like the party versus the sober boy. Nice. That's how it ends. And the disco always comes out on top, <laughs> baby. Because people know a good time when they see it. Is there a handshake at the end of the match? Obviously. He's one of Done. the goats, bro. He's one of the goats. Thank you. You're this the greatest. Okay, fabe. It's my time now. Exactly. Handshake that. done. Thank you for the passing of the pipe bomb. Okay. Who do you eventually drop your title to? And how long was your reign for? MJF, I think. MJF takes it from you. Uh, beat Bruno Sammartino's reign. Okay. The longest party. Longest reign. <laughs> longest, re- longest party. The, long- <laughs> the party don't stop. As I get slowly <laughs> more. The party don't stop at the solo disco, baby. I told you I'm the party. Um, and I just get slowly more crazy. It's almost like a, a, a an allegory for what would happen if you party too hard for too long. You drop to MJF. Yeah. It's now time. We've come into the end of your career now, the silo, uh, the solo disco. Are you fired or are you retired? Nah, I walk out like Stone Cold. Just got pissed off about who I dropped the title to. Uh, I'm retired, definitely. You're I'm retired. Easy, I think I'm easy to work with. I'd like to say I'm easy to work with. I think most people, not everybody, would probably have... I think you're probably the worst person because when we work together, neither of us are probably exactly where we need to be in life. We both had our own issues going on. You had a dog running around the gaff. I was uh, into things that I probably uh, would prejudice myself if I I talked about on the pod, but uh, (laughs) I'm definitely cleaner and sober now. Uh, Not as clean and sober as you, but we we didn't work together because we just both had our own shit going on and long lives a pain to fucking run. Uh, Especially when you're a bit ahead of the mic circuit, which as we both were. But uh, I think most people, especially nowadays, would say I'm quite pleasant to work with. Mm-hmm. So I think I would retire. I think it'd be. I don't think I'd be fired for maybe gross misconduct. Yeah, I can see that happening. <laughs> but not like putting anyone in a difficult position or making anyone feel uncomfortable or just being an arsehole. You'd never really hear those Shawn Michael stories. Not the the non fun ones. You'd hear some fun ones like Rick. No, Ric Flair's not the best thing. All of these party guys <laughs> in the 90s, it was... You're cleaning up know. the party. That's what I, you're doing. I was a, yeah, I'm cleaning up the party. Everyone has fun. Do you know what I mean? Everyone feels comfortable. And my final question for you, before I wish you well on your future endeavours, <laughs> are you a serious contender for the Hall of Fame or do you become a forgotten legend? Serious contender. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. It's, it, it's a no-brainer. You're going in. Yeah, you've beaten the reign of Bruno San Martino. Exactly. You have to. You know what I mean? Who and I have you? to have done something really bad at the party yeah. to beat the reign of Bruno San Martino and then not be included in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and, okay, then you're going into the Hall of Fame. Who inducts you? Punk or MJF? Punk or MJF? Yeah. Depending be... depending who accepts the fee. Yeah. Whichever yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. <laughs> or whoever I connected with most off stage, which I think it probably they both. Give off at times in their career like they're uh, disagreeable people, but I think once you connect with one of them, really, you really open up some soul there. Well, the solo disco, the Tyneside Tornado, thank you for coming on What's Your Gimmick? I'm now going to wish you well on your future endeavours. That's okay, baby boy. I got another party to head to. Don't you worry. It never stops with the solo disco. <laughs> And there you have it, my friends. There is the most recent episode of What's Your Gimmick? Thank you so, so much for downloading and listening to this podcast. I really enjoyed doing it. I hope you really enjoy listening to it. If you do, please give us a subscribe. Tell your friends about it. And if you really want to, please give us five stars. That really helps other people finding the podcast. Until next time, my friends, see you soon. Masks and capes are all the same. Heels and faces play the game. I'll drive her heartbeats claim Cow will put you in the frame What's your gimmick? Let it show GG wants to know In the spotlight, let it flow Cow, how we steal the show Talk the talk and walk the walk Give the crowd the wrestling shock Turnbuckle dreams and concrete chalk Gene will let the secrets unlock Watch your gimmick, feel the fire Cut a promo, lift you higher Gene Genie fuels the desire Cows you got through the wire Watch your gimmick, let it show Gene Genie wants to know In the spotlight, let it flow
You've been listening to a Calvert Media production.